Miss Callie sent us in a comment. RBG has cancer again. Yes. So, look, I did see that this morning. Um, I saw Paula Reed of CBS posted the, the letter from Ginsburg. She has a recurrence of cancer, has no plans to leave the court. She's on a new course of chemotherapy. Now, when you hear that, you immediately think, well, I've seen a couple of different updates about her going to the hospital recently. Is it related to that? Apparently, it's not. Those are other health concerns that she's addressing, apparently successfully, and apparently those have been dealt with, but she is experiencing a recurrence of cancer shown um, after a biopsy revealed lesions on her liver. So, you, you, and Brett, you probably saw this took over Twitter as it does anytime there's a health scare with her, but um, yeah, obviously, you know, ho hope that she gets through it uh, perfectly healthy. Yeah. And it scares people because... It's consequential, obviously. I mean, yeah. I know that you're not like it. It is morbid to talk in this way, but many people that will be their response. Is it is so consequential, particularly in a time where we're seeing five four court decisions uh, on a on a constant basis. The idea that you could go even more one step further into a court that's going to be striking down voting rights and God knows what else is is pretty terrifying. Yep. And Mitch McConnell is on the record saying that he would fill a court vacancy within a year of a presidential election, even though that is grossly hypocritical given his activities going up into the 2016 election. Wait, but it's but hypocritical, though. But if Brett. that's to you, you are you're an ostrich. But wouldn't he look wouldn't he look silly considering that he was against it under Obama? You're right. He's never looked silly in the past. I know. I know. If anyone has any. You should do this anyway. This this should be your motivation for voting, period. Just, that's it. Like, yeah. we just covered Supreme Court decisions affecting enfranchisement. Um, and it is a miracle. And just, okay, so it is a miracle that some of these closed decisions have gone ways that are decent. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Recently, there yes, has been yeah. the... And, and for that to be considered a miracle shows you just how brazen the like Republican leaning attempts to force court decisions through that undo what we take to be law of the land. Yep. They're getting more and more brazen and these things are getting higher and higher in the courts because the referees, the lower court appointees from Trump are getting closer and closer to the the off the charts wackadoodle guy that he is that Mitch McConnell has put in place where like the referees are stacking it so that all these, these undeserving case, like teams for, you know, to continue the metaphor, get to the finals. Yeah. Yeah. Um, he would, Mitch McConnell would confirm that the morning of the election. Yeah. Like he'd do it on his way to vote. Like he doesn't care. He doesn't care. He'd do it whenever he wouldn't necessarily do it the day after the election. If Trump, um, goes down we'll see i mean god and you know i think we were, we were just talking about a court case you know hypothetically what about other ones what if hypothetically there were other potential court cases that you know could potentially determine whether a lot of people live or die oh what do you know we reported yesterday on how uh georgia's uh governor um decided that they were going to stop cities from requiring masks well as of today he is suing atlanta to stop them to force the mandate away, which is really going to be opposed by national Republicans because, you know, like, you know, we're supposed to respect the rights of the states, but also the localities. They're supposed to be able to determine their own fate. So they're going to hate this. But um, could this go to the Supreme Court? Why not? Atlanta could be forced to stop its mandate and could be forced to raise its COVID case count because the governor decided that he didn't like it. Hey, Ivy. The governor of Alabama is mandating masks. The governor of Arkansas is mandating masks. Like, this is a thing that he is an outlier on. Why? Because he probably, he, I mean, he wants to kiss Trump's buns, mm -hmm. um, Trump <laughs> does. And it, it will continue until we stop it. So, But just know that there are Republican governors in other states who are just looking around and Overall approval for d Republican governors handling when compared to Democratic governors handling of the, the epidemic or pandemic, um, the Democratic governors have a much more favorable mm -hmm. rating in terms of how it's getting.
For more political news breakdowns, interviews, stories of activism, and me trying my hardest to care about the occasional big celebrity news story, subscribe to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash the damage report. And you can ring the bell wherever it is so you don't miss anything.